Hey, what's up? It's a Wick for Wikimedia Tutorials, and today we're going to talk about equalizers again. If you've missed the first part about EQ, you can check that out right here. First off for today, we're going to take a look at the different types of EQ circuitry that can be used. We've got passive EQs and active EQs. Passive EQs make use of passive electronic components like inductors and capacitors. In theory, a passive equalizer can only apply a cut. How this works is that all frequencies are attenuated by a certain amount, except for the frequencies that need to be boosted, which are attenuated less. The boost is achieved by a second amplifier which boosts all frequencies evenly, so the selected frequencies are now boosted because these were not attenuated by the same amount. The advantage of passive equalizers is that they have very low noise levels and they can give a very pleasant sound. They are also being used a lot in mastering situations. The disadvantage of passive equalizers is that they are much more expensive and larger in size than active equalizers. Active equalizers use active electronic components. Active equalizers are capable of creating a boost which is achieved by a feedback loop that sends the selected frequency back through the amplifier. This means that equalizing your signal can actually create a little bit of phasing. These active EQs do have the advantage of having a relatively low cost, depending on the brand and the model that is. They are fairly light weighted and they offer a good boost and cut level. The disadvantage is that the active components can generate some noise, but this is mostly on an uh, acceptable level. When we are working digital, we have different types of EQs and they can achieve a lot more boost and cut than a traditional analog equalizer can. Digital equalizers can generate less noise and phase shift, they have greater precision than analog and they have the benefit of quickly being resetted. On the other hand, the point of discussion is that the digital equalizers sound a lot colder and they don't add that extra coloration to the signal that the analog gear does. The last decade though, many manufacturers have greatly improved their algorithms and uh, the quality of EQ plugins, including the addition of uh, saturation and harmonics. Let's take a big leap forward a couple of seasons and let's quickly talk about digital audio. I think uh, most of you uh, will be doing your recordings digitally and then we're gonna run into bits and sample rate. And this has got a lot to do with the quality of your EQ. Let's take a look at the standard sample rate and bit depth that's being used for CD quality. For CDs we use a bit depth of 16 bit and a sample rate of 44,100 which in uh, audio slang we call 44.1. Uh, the 16 bits means that there are 16 bits available to register the amplitude values of a signal. Recording your signal at a higher bit rate, on uh, 24 bits for example, means that we've got a greater dynamic range and thus a bigger headroom to work with while mixing digitally. The sample rate is the rate at which the samples are stored. So this is basically representing the frequency. A sample rate of 44.1 is capable of registering the half of the frequencies because it has to register at least two samples per completed cycle. But it does mean it can register the whole frequency spectrum. Working on a sample rate of 20 kHz means that we can only record signals up to 10 kHz. Working on a higher sample rate means that our EQs have a lot more values to work with. And this would mean that we can have better EQ results when working with higher sample rates as well. This basically goes for a lot of plugins, also for reverbs and, uh, and other processors. But uh, it's really a big, big advantage when working with EQs. Not all audio interfaces are capable of working with these higher sample rates and bit depths and it's going to require a lot more processing power from your computer. So you can probably not record and mix as many tracks as you were used to when working with lower bit depths and sample rates. So that was a little bit off topic today but completely on topic as well. I'm going to continue with digital audio in a much later season. This was just helping you guys out concerning uh, digital audio quality and the quality of digital EQ. I hope you've uh, enjoyed today's tutorial. In the next uh, tutorial I'm going to look at a more practical approach. I'm going to insert some, uh, some various equalizers and we're going to listen to them and uh, really uh, see the differences and, uh, and what we can do with them. I uh, hope you've learned some thing today. As always, this was Wick for Wikimedia Tutorials and uh, I hope to see y'all soon. Peace!